This will serve as my last will and testament. Um, I'm lost in the chalk caves of Champagne, France. Um, I lost my group. They have left me. And I'm here in the chalk caves. Just me and 25 million bottles of champagne. <laughs> I'll be fine. Every night, in every city around the world, it happens. People pour into local watering holes to, well, drink. It's my mission, that's me, to traverse the globe, getting to know these different people and their drinking customs. Bellying up to the bar, and with any luck, making some new friends. Warning! If you find yourself drinking in a champagne bar in France, you might find this guy. Hey, 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 hey! And if you do, watch your flute, because he might be on the prowl. You'll see more of the champagne snatcher later. But first... Champagne. It's not just a drink. It's also a region in the northeast of France. I know, because I'm going to drink champagne here. I'm going to find out why it's a crime to pound an entire glass of it. Come on. Ah, come on. Check, 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 check. No. I'm going to find out why it's illegal in France to call sparkling wine champagne if it's not made here. I love it. And I'm going to test the locally held theory that you can't get a hangover from champagne. Mm -hmm. You can't get a hangover from champagne? Which, of course, will require many, many drinks when I go three sheets in Champagne, France. <laughs> You're going to love it. Watch this. I'm in the heart of Champagne country, the city of Reims, at Le Café du Palais, where I've convinced the owner, Jean-Francois, to join me for a drink. And do you drink champagne? Oh, yes. A lot? Oh, all of the day. Oh, you are a young boy. Let's get some of that champagne. Jean-Francois has no idea what he just walked into. He thinks we're going to have a nice little glass of champagne and some polite conversation. Oh, no. I'm in for the long haul, Jean-Francois. I plan on taking this guy down a champagne drinking path that he's never been down. We'll see how far I can push him. But first, bring on the bubbly. You want a bottle? Yeah. Bottle. Yes. Yeah. And you get one for yourself, too. Yeah. <laughs> What's the one for you? We can, we'll share one. You want to we store glasses? Sure. Allez. Hmm. Maybe I should work on my language skills. Whatever you do, don't drink every time you hear the word champagne. I, I'm trying to say it right. You have to say champagne. 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 Oui? Thank you. Champagne. 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 Got it. Champagne. See? It's a very serious thing here. Champagne. 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 <laughs> I have to make sure I have it, because I want to say champagne. OK, enough with the pronunciation. Good day. OK. Smile. I smile? Yes. And then? OK. And then smell it? And then I have to smile and I'm OK. Good. Good. Oh, I'm not surprised. I'm not, yeah, of course it is good. Obviously, this champagne thing is new to me. When I do have champagne, for example, a wedding, I'll have whiskey, bière, um, and then I'll have some champagne. Then I go dancing. And I'm an excellent dancer, by the way. I don't know you're interested in that. And then I have more beer, more wine, a shot of, like, tequila. My friend Steve is like, dude, you got to drink the tequila. And then, uh, and then I end with like a glass of champagne. Now the next morning, I wake up and I am, I have a hangover. So really the question here is, if I just stick to champagne, will I be fine in the morning? You told me I can drink 10 glasses and not have a hangover. You said I'd be smiling. Not in 10 minutes, but you have time. Oh yeah, I got all night. Let's do this thing. But first, I want to foreshadow. This is me drunk. <laughs> Thank you, Sober Zane. We are playing a drinking game, and he lost, and he has to chug his Cristal. So it's because it's Cristal. It's because it's Cristal. It's a crime. 
Back to you, sober Zane. That was me drunk. That's, that's ugly. That's an ugly man. I need more champagne like him. Ali. Like most champagne, the bubbly that Jean-Francois serves me is a blend of three signature grapes from the region. Pinot Noir, Pinot Meunier, and Chardonnay. How do I know about these grapes? Because earlier that same day, I went to Champagne College. Champagne College is in the town of Ethonay. And of course, as soon as class begins, the hangover question comes up. Tell me about the hangover thing. So you can't, you can't get a hangover from Champagne? <laughs> the headache, I say. Yeah. Also, sometimes I vomit. Do you know this word? No. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. It's not champagne. Really? No. You hit something, it's not good. Stop. <laughs> Who has their phone on in class? So it's not the champagne? No, it's not. It was like the oysters from, from yes. three weeks before. Yes, I think. Okay. <laughs> oysters, bad. Champagne, good. I got it. Man, everyone says you can't get a hangover from this stuff. Okay. We'll find out soon enough. Really but first, a little tutorial. I'm served three types of champagne, each made from only one of the three regional grapes. This will allow me to distinguish the different characteristics of the different grapes. Pinot Meunier is a red grape, and the champagne is pink because they use the skins. Pinot Noir is another red grape, but the champagne that's made from it is white because the skins are not used. And the Chardonnay is your classic champagne color from the green Chardonnay grape. So how do they differ in smell and taste? I smell pear. I smell maybe a little apricot. Chardonnay? It's, it's looking like it's a Chardonnay. Yes. Where's the tasting part? We have to taste. Now we have to taste it. This is the tough part. Oh. Mm -hmm. Oh, what am I doing? Sorry. I gotta hold it in my mouth. Don't laugh. Don't laugh because you'll spit it out. <laughs> am I supposed to go like that? Uh, it's to smell with the mouth. Or when you smell, when you have the wine in your It's mouth. much different. Much different. Now, onto the second glass. Toast. You see, you see Foxy. Okay. Yeah, but honey. Um, honey. Yeah? Oh, are you saying it tastes... You smell, it smells foxy? The champagne is very light. Like a squirrel? Yeah. So it smells like a squirrel? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, so Pinot Noir. Just one. Because it smells foxy? Yeah. And like a squirrel. Okay. It's good. Yeah. On to the last one. So, this is definitely salmon pink, yes, right? Yes, definitely. Pink varieties of champagne yeah. tend to be fruitier. I usually do that after class. Or it's why I skip class. Do you know, like, a, you know what a bong is? Yes, I have, I have one in, uh, in my house. You <laughs> You have a bong in your house? That's awesome. You should meet my friend Steve because he went to college for 17 years because of marijuana. No, you smell, smell it? it. Wow. It smells like a new car. It's like a brand new one. Smell it. Think about it. That's what this smells like. I smell a fruit and red fruit. Okay. I'm going to trust you because you're a professor of wine. Man, it smells like a new car. Um, so this is... Pinot Meunier. You should put that on here, new car. Yes. <laughs> new car smell. Yeah, yes. I'll write it in later and I'll translate it. Is it good for uh, champagne wine or new car? Uh. <laughs> okay, she's taught me how to taste it, but how much is too much? For the answer to that, you gotta meet this guy. He swore on his children that he drank how many one day? Only once. But, okay, one day. Tw tw 12 bottles. <laughs> 12 <laughs> sure. 12 bottles in one day. I can't. Maybe you have like overly developed livers or something. I was born here. It was, yeah, but you're still a human being. Anyway, after tipping back a few more with a teacher, I leave Champagne College with an honorary degree. Coming up, can I get this guy to pound an entire glass of champagne? It's a crack. And churches and caves. Why are these part of what makes Champagne the drink and Champagne the region inseparable?
Reims, France. I'm sitting with the owner of La Café <laughs> du Palais. Come here, my friend. And I'm planning on drinking 10 glasses of champagne to see if it's true that this stuff won't give me a hangover. My job is to drink. Wow. Yes. What a good job. It's a good job, exactly. The more I hang out with Jean-Francois, the more obvious it is that we Americans don't know jack about champagne. So, here we go. The Three Sheets book of champagne faux pas and fallacies. Do you have mimosa? Uh, no. Yeah, so I no. It's when you put champagne and orange and, and, and juice. Wait, we don't. We don't. Mimosa. Yes, mimosa. Mimosa. But we don't make here mimosa no. because it's 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 like dirtying the yeah, champagne. Yes. It may be good, but we don't make no, this in champagne. Do when you drink champagne, you're supposed to have strawberry. You don't know no in champagne? No. You, Another fallacy. You, you think strawberry? Yeah, champagne? they tell us that when you have champagne, you're supposed to have a strawberry to cleanse your palate. <laughs> now I was told that the champagne glass was modeled after the breast of Marie Antoinette. I don't know. Do you believe it? Maybe. Okay. I'm going to put that down as another fallacy. All right. Anyway, one thing I do know for sure Boy. is that champagne definitely makes you burp. It has bubbles in it. <laughs> hey, burp. This is the question. All champagne, or champagne, comes from this area. Yes. Around Rims. Yes. So why is it that the only true champagne in the world comes from this region? This calls for a Three Sheets documentary on the origins of champagne. It all began in the city of Epernay at the Abbey des Hospitalers, where Dom Perignon, a blind Benedictine monk, discovered the modern day champagne roughly 300 years ago. The father blended already fermented still wine from different vineyards and different years. He then allowed these new blends to ferment a second time while still in the bottle. It's during this second fermentation that these blended wines develop their signature bubble. Ladies and gentlemen, Dom Perignon, give it up for the father. The grapes of Champagne are considered unique because they grow atop a chalky subsoil said to retain moisture, nourishing the grapes even during dry spells. Deep within this chalky soil lies a maze of roughly 150 miles of chalk caves. It's chalk. These caves retain a year-round temperature of 52 degrees Fahrenheit. Considered the perfect natural refrigeration chamber for the second fermentation and aging. It's the chalk, the grapes that it yields, the blends that the makers devise, and the caves where champagne is aged that make sparkling wine from this region so unique. So unique, in fact, that in France, it's against the law to call sparkling wine champagne if it's not made here according to strict standards. All right, back to the champagne bar. Now, see, that's glass number four. I'm hoping to find out if you get what you pay for when you buy champagne. It's this. It's the label. No, no, no. No? Okay, time for a test. Do you have, do you have Cristal? Yes. Do you have Cristal? Yes. How much is it? One hundred and twenty, cent vingt. One hundred and twenty euros? Yes. <laughs> yeah, we'll get it. You want one? Yeah. Oh. I'm not even gonna look at my producer. Have him say no. <laughs> Don't say that. Give me, give me the, yeah, give me the crystal. Cristal, cristal is, is the, one of the best. One of the best. What is, what is the best? It depends on. on I think it's the best right here. No, no, no. It depends. You are so modest. You're killing me. Uh, All right. Here comes the good stuff. Okay. 1996. Yeah. Good year. Okay. And by the way, here they don't pop the cork. They use a gentle touch. Quiet down. Quiet, man. Quiet. Ah. Wait a minute. I barely even heard the cork pop. 
Yep, pretty quiet. Hello! Of course they know how to open a bottle of champagne and champagne. Okay, brace yourself. Now it's my turn to pop the cork. I want to launch this thing and take out a champagne. Bro. I won't, I won't, I won't. <laughs> oh. All right, so who was better, the waiter or me? Let's check the champagne sound meters. Oh. All right, so his was quieter. Big deal. Okay, thank you. Champagne. So we're gonna pour because that one. This one is maybe. Okay, for the taste test, here's what we have. First, a $35 bottle of the Cafe du Palais House Champagne. Next, an $80 bottle of Mouet. And yes, America, it's not Moet, it's Moet. You can tell because of those two dots above the E. See? And finally, the one and only Cristal, which goes for about $160 a bottle. Okay, so, uh, champagne number one. Bubbly, tastes like champagne. Okay, number two. You know what? A little smoother, not as harsh. Pretty nice. Number three. Lighter than the first two. Not bad. Okay, so if I had to rate them, here's how it would go. So, I'd say this is one, two, and three. Which one was yours? This one. Two, four. number two. All right. Good, I'm happy about that. The truth is, there are no absolutes when it comes to champagne. Even the connoisseurs agree. It's personal preference. And you can't determine that with the price of the bottle. And if you don't believe me, believe this guy. Jean-Marie runs Godemay Champagne, located in the town of Verzenay. It's a family operation typical of the region. And guys, if you don't get champagne yet, this guy will break it down for you. What does make a woman beautiful? Is it her hair, her eyes, her mouth, her body? Or is it a combination of the four of them? And I think in the wine, that's also what you can get. If you get the balance between the acid, the food, the flowering, the aging, and the, the what we, can, we said in French, the coup de pâte. <laughs> so the, the experience of the winemaker, then you get the greatest. Jean-Marie relies on grapes from a total of 84 different vineyards to create the signature Godemay blends. You can get acid from one, the fruit from another one, you make a blend, and that is your, your heritage. So you can get a wide variety of champagnes from this small region. But the coolest thing I learned from this guy is that you can use the bottom of an empty bottle to have your next drink. I think it's your turn now. By the way, if you're craving some of this stuff, it is available in parts of the United States. Is it not beautiful? Okay, so I get it. Champagne is a passion here. And back at Cafe du Palais, I found a guy who might have a little too much passion for champagne. <laughs> Coming up, is this guy gonna get my champagne? No. And later, Will champagne give me a hangover? Yeah, no, it's fine. Being drunk. All right, let me explain something about this show. In most of the bars we take our cameras into, we seem to attract people who are, let's just say, a little too curious about what I'm drinking. France is no exception. This is, this is what they make here? Meet the guy I'm calling Champagne Snatcher. He slides in, he's like the beer hunter from the Belgium episode. He just keeps picking them up and drinking them like they're his beers. And he slides in, he tries to sneak a, sneak a champagne. First, he uses our sandwiches as a ruse to get our champagne. Yeah, but you can't, you can't take his champagne. I know how much it's... Sorry. No, I know. <laughs> Next, his lady friend tries to divert my attention with some yes. cheese. I would like to try some French cheese. No, Come on. no, no. 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 Mm, I'm touching your cheese. Ah, no. This smells Very like. Sandwich. Do you know what? Uh, baby diaper? <laughs> hey, 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 hey! You, 
you put that down, you little, you little champagne snatcher. Go get your glass. No! Go get your glass, I'll give you some. You gotta give him credit for persistence. Mouette and chandon. Yeah. It's okay? It's okay. I don't want you to get mad at me. Start throwing cheese Yours. around. Yeah, my friend Steve gets mad when he drinks, too. You know Steve? Steve, yeah. All right, Steve. Steve. You know Steve. You know Steve. Anyway, With the champagne snatcher off my back, I'm ready to teach Jean-Francois an American tradition. So, we have a game called quarters, but you don't have quarters over here, you have euros. Yes. He swears to me that he's never played this before. Hmm, is he sandbagging me? I just chugged Cristal. Oh, did I tell you that in France, you never, ever chug an entire glass of champagne? Did you see what I did? It's I, 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 I champagne must know. be a pleasure. Wouldn't it be a pleasure to see Jean-Francois chug a glass of champagne? Yes! You gotta pick one, man. You gotta pick a glass of champagne. Which one are you gonna drink? The, the Cristal? Cristal, Okay, so you're gonna chug? Cristal. It's a crime. I know it's a crime. I know. Uh, yeah, crime. You live in Champagne, you can't chug Champagne. But, but, but you, but like we, you know, you lost, you know? Like we did the thing and I got it. You know what I mean? You know? One sip. Come on. No, two. No, no, no I can't. Cristal. You know what? I gotta get video of a Frenchman chugging champagne. You gotta do it for me. It's champagne, it's, it's a beer. I know, but it's funny. <laughs> yes! Oh! All right. Is that fun? <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's fun. You jackass. Let's just, you know what? Let's, 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 this is a silly game. This is how the whole French American War got started. Mm. And, and we're, we're gonna, we're gonna just step back like that. It's like gentlemen. <laughs> Eleven. I've exceeded my own expectations. Right now, I'm feeling pretty good. Great, in fact. I dusted 11 glasses of champagne on top of the drinks I had at Champagne College, and I'm still going strong. But the question remains, will I get a hangover? The only way to know is to wait until morning. <laughs> yep, my head is pounding. I'm barely able to peel myself out of bed, and since everyone claims that you can't get a hangover from champagne, nobody has a cure. What do we have here, champagne? Yeah. Sure, he yeah, made a cool little noise there. Ow, big surprise. Champagne for breakfast. You're taking out someone's eye with that? Let's see. Ah, what the hell. When in champagne. There's another guy with a hangover. <laughs> Thank you so much. What a trip. I got a French guy to pound a glass of champagne. I tasted chalk. It's chalk. I learned that champagne is like a woman. Is it not beautiful? I met a guy who drank a dozen bottles of champagne in one day. And I understand now why you can only get true champagne here in Champagne. It's a champagne region. As for the theory that you can't get a hangover from champagne, I invite you to come here and test it yourself. Because even though I got one, I enjoyed every minute I spent creating it. Champagne France, home of the best grape juice I've ever had. Mm. Yes. <laughs> All I have is 25 million bottles of champagne and the cameraman. <laughs> At the Abbey, where a monk created the very, very first day. Oops. Sorry. <laughs> How do you say in French? I want to kill this sound man. He is like nails on a chalkboard. 
<laughs> when he starts talking, we call him a sound monkey. <laughs>